Hello, I'm Peter Hill and welcome to my podcast of Peter Hill Explains, or videocast in this case. This I'm going to cover a basic science lesson in which we teach students about the actual scales of our galaxies. And we start off with a typical millennial picture where you open three browsers concurrently in one screen, a large screen. And in our first browser, which we're zooming in here, we're going to actually just ask, type in to the browser, the um, <coughs> diameter of the sun. You see me typing around here. Now the strange thing here is that uh, the browsers are now intelligent. And so if you type in something like the browser, the diameter of the sun in kilometers, for instance, it will automatically tell you the answer with no looking up. And so you can go straight there, zoom out, and then um, <clears throat> sorry, zoom out and then copy that answer. So we're going to zoom out. It's now thinking for a while. It's a slow internet connection, ADSL wire connection. I haven't got broadband up here in this part of the mountains, the Loo Mountains. So the answer is um, 1.39 or 1.4 million kilometers. Now with students, it's hard to memorize that. So we're just going to copy and paste they put it in their short-term memory so to speak and when we copy it we've actually pasted it into the browser up here now we're going to say well look we want to change this to a scale of a one to a trillion so we say give us an answer divided by a trillion a trillion is a million million it's a useful scale that we're going to work to work out what is the size of the sun if you had it a scale of one to a trillion be asking that in millimeters because students are very used to what the size of a millimeter is. Can we just thinking again and we get the answer coming out here of 1.4 millimeters. So the sun at the scale of a trillion is a little ball bearing of one and a half millimeters. Now we go back over here and say is the picture of the sun and we want to ask another question here. So in kilometers being technically savvy we we change it the distance from the um, uh, Earth to the Sun, and it's uh, putting Earth is incorrect. We'll put Sun in here. I'm not speeding this up. This is real live typing, so your students will do that. And uh, the trick over here, I've always find it with the browsers, um, is to put a space and then type enter afterwards. But that's the distance to the Sun. So the sun is <coughs> 1.4 million kilometers across, but it's close on uh, 150 million kilometers. It's, we have an elliptical orbit, so that's an average distance. So let's put that up here. Now, Google's not smart enough for you to put the direct uh, English term up here. You have to actually put the numerical term, but you don't have to be very sophisticated. You can put that in there, and that uh, will automatically give us the answer unless I put the space and enter to allow Google to operate its thinking and oh dear it's <coughs> 150 millimeters or half the length of your school ruler so if you have a small ball bearing uh, and um, the earth orbits at about half the length of the uh, school ruler now you can continue to let the students to do this once they know this basic uh, procedure they don't have to memorize anything or memorize the procedure um, they just have to ask basic questions so I'm going to ask now what is the distance to Alpha Centauri that's our nearest star so remember at this state the Sun is a ball bearing ah it's 41 trillion kilometers so I'm going to take that distance here I could take the entire distance but I'm just going to take the number 41.32 that, so that's a number whereas with the unit, it's a number and unit, it's a scientific number. Come over here and uh, paste it in here. So it's instead of the distance from the Earth to the Sun, it's the distance to Alpha Centauri, our nearest visible neighbor. And um, <coughs> millimeters is going to be not enough. We've got to change that into something more useful. So rather than millimeters, I think let's go for kilometers. Oh, so millimeters is far too many millimeters. That's 41 million 
uh, millimeters and I know how many millimeters uh, there are in a kilometer there's a million millimeters in kilometers but I put a K in here put a K in here and space after press enter um, this is one of the things I suppose it's just the Chrome browser requires that so it's 41 kilometers away uh, interestingly that's about the distance um, from up here in Glenbrook to the uh, center of Sydney so you if you had a ball bearing sitting in um, uh, the Opera House and you have another blue ball bearing sitting 41 kilometers in um, the Blue Mountains that gives you a rough idea of the huge vastness and emptiness of space now though other than Alpha Centauri here I'm going to ask uh, Andromeda Andromeda is our nearest um, uh, galaxy so we're in a galaxy our sister galaxy is Andromeda equal in size probably a bit bigger than the Milky Way ah now it won't give us it in kilometers because that's too big a number give us in light years now Google should be smart enough we take this and just pop that in here it should be able to work things out for us and tell, tell us how many kilometers away at a scale of one to a trillion um, is the distance to Andromeda in light years so the basic idea of this lesson is that you say look we're just going to operate the universe in um, uh, a scale of one to a trillion one to a billion is another uh, interesting thing that's one to a thousand million that you can use that but to keep things simple you just have one scale to start off with so divide by a million in kilometer by a trillion and in kilometers so we'll see how far this is now remembering <coughs> This is the space after and press enter for this to work and we get 24 million kilometers so that's a bit of the distance between here and the Sun uh, if you imagine this is a little bit ball bearing the next galaxy is that far away so you can continue doing this but this is the fundamental idea of rather than bamboozling people with it's too big to imagine you give them a tool and they don't have to memorize anything they can just remember to take the operation so their head is not full of uh, factors and things like that they can see the operation quite simply so this uh, is a technique I think we should use it in classroom it's a very useful classroom exercise probably show this to the students while you're um, um, uh, teaching and they'll be able to pick it up so you don't really have to instruct it in detail you can just show the students this video and they should be able to work out and replicate it the key thing to do is uh, reducing your working memory by having um, three screens open I have the middle screen for interesting things for if I want to say uh, how find an object which is equivalent in length to an object that I found so the middle screen is just for me to doodle and think the other screens are to get data and to process data and in between is my thinking screen so thank you very much for listening and do listen to my pod podcasts on itunes and hopefully soon on spotify uh, peter hill explains thank you very much for listening